Hey guys, we are back. And we have some backup information. When I say backup information, I mean Eurogamer backing up the recent statements from Emily Rogers and Laura K. Dell about The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild's release date coming in March for the Switch and not in the summertime as what was previously stated by Eurogamer, Emily Rogers, and Laura K. Dell in the past. Back in November 2016, Eurogamer reported that Zelda was not completed yet and it still had about four to six months before it was ready to launch and that it would miss the launch of the Nintendo Switch. And the reasoning they were giving for that was that Nintendo was going through a lengthy quality assurance time period for the game because it was such a huge game and such an expensive effort, lots of text to translate, things like that. It was taking a lot longer than what they were initially anticipating, of course. And of course, we can all agree, the game was due to release in 2015, right? Now it's coming out in 2017. But anyway, so what changed? Well, I'll read it from their website. It says, multiple sources close to Nintendo have now told Eurogamer that at the end of last year, Japan finalized its plans and had a change of heart. Aw, thank you. <laughs> Switch needed the strongest possible launch lineup. So in short, Zelda will release in March in North America and Japan. Zelda's launch timing in Europe is still unclear. So that's unfortunate to hear about Europe, but great news to Nintendo fans in the United States and Japan, of course, if this becomes true. And Eurogamer hasn't really been wrong yet concerning the Switch, so hopefully this does become true. Eurogamer went on to say that Nintendo wanted to release the game as a launch title for the Switch the whole time, especially Nintendo of Japan, but apparently they were trying to make everybody happy and release the game in all territories at the same time, but Nintendo, after you know discussing things, decided that they wanted the Switch to have the best launch lineup possible, which I don't understand the thought process behind that, because obviously you want to have your system to have the best launch lineup you could possibly have, right? So having the most anticipated game in 2017 as your launch title, I think that's going to sell a lot of systems, right? But yes, you have the other side of the coin saying that, you know, this is Zelda. It's been in development since 2012, probably after Skyward Sword finished. So this is a huge, huge game and they don't want to rush anything before it's finished. So I guess they wrapped up things quicker on the Japan and United States version than what they originally were saying. So hopefully there's no like bugs or anything like that in the game as far as performance issues because of them trying to make sure it makes launch for the Nintendo Switch. I'm sure all the fans would appreciate the game being completely finished before they actually released it. Even though they would love to play it on launch day, I'm sure we all could agree that we want the complete experience, even if it's delayed a month you know, to April or something. I think as Nintendo fans, we all gotta keep that in mind that Nintendo could theoretically just change the date anytime they want to. Nothing is set in stone. Regardless of what Eurogamer says, nothing can be really said for sure until Nintendo officially announces it. Hopefully on January 12th they have that release date. Hopefully it is March and hopefully this is correct. And Eurogamer, like I said, has been correct multiple, multiple times in the past. But this is very encouraging news that the Switch could be getting the biggest game of 2017 as a launch title. I'm sure everyone's going to want to go out and pre-order that as soon as possible. So we'll look forward to seeing more about that most likely next week, right? And the next bit of information I want to talk about was NVIDIA's press conference yesterday at CES. They introduced a brand new Shield TV game console. It's going to be, you know, able to play games just like the previous Shield TV, but it's going to be enhanced. It's going to have 4K HDR capability. The previous model didn't have HDR. It's going to have advanced AI features with this uh, little microphone that comes with it that you can kind of tell what to do inside your house. So that's pretty cool. But the most interesting thing I took out of that presentation was that NVIDIA didn't even announce the chip or the specs for it in the presentation, but later on, on the website, it was found that it was listed as using the Maxwell-based 2015 Tegra X1 processor. So they're releasing a brand new revision to the Shield TV with a brand new controller and all that stuff with new features, but it's still using the Maxwell-based Tegra X1 processor very interesting move right and in their presentation they did talk about the px chip that they're going to be using in cars for their automotive industry and that is using the parker chip which is the tegra x2 basically so that parker chip is available to use however they chose to use the tegra x1 for their new shield product it is kind of weird they're showing a new shield product right before the reveal of the nintendo switch one week before i thought that was kind of weird 
and offering it for $199. But besides that, the PX Drive chip is heavily focused on the automotive side of things with the advanced AI and things like that. They made it clear that the Tegra X2, if you want to call it that as well, is focusing more on that aspect. So that it is kind of disappointing that they aren't even using their own chip for their next iteration of the Shield TV. How does this relate to the Nintendo Switch, you say? Well, this basically makes it very likely that the Nintendo Switch is in fact running that Maxwell-based Tegra X1 processor that Eurogamer reported on back in mid-December. They said it was running a customized Tegra X1 processor. Again, clocked at 300 megahertz while undocked and over 700 megahertz while docked. And the full clock speed, of course, of the CPU of the Tegra X1 is over a gigahertz. So still underclocked from a stock Tegra X1. And Digital Foundry slash Eurogamer did make it clear that it is based on this chip running with 256 CUDA cores, not 512, not more than that, but running with 256 CUDA cores, which is exactly the same as what the Tegra X1 has. But keep in mind there's going to be custom features of it that they brought out that are not known, but you can assume that some of the Pascal Parker features that NVIDIA is using, you could likely assume that they will try to put some of that in that custom chip for a better memory bandwidth, but obviously it's not going to be that much more improved over the Tegra X1 because it's basically like just a better variation of it that they're going to be using for the X2 with deeper learning and AI for the CPU. So back I think a week and a half ago or two weeks ago I was talking about the specs maybe being an issue and I, I did mention that the Wii U was only clocked at like 180 gigaflops which upon looking back on that I think I was incorrect actually because Digital Foundry did an extensive GPU in-depth look on the Wii U back in 2013 and I'll link to the article in the description and they brought out that the Wii U GPU featured 320 stream processors they did a diagram and a graph and everything and they haven't changed this article since 2013 it still says that so this is more credible than the other source that I'm going to talk about that went on about the Wii U for all this time but it brought out that the Wii U has 320 stream processors married up with 16 texture mapping units and featuring 8 RLPs, which is rendering output units. Putting all that together and the Wii U actual G-Flops performance is about 350, which is way better, basically double uh, the 176 that was speculated on from NeoGAF. So that whole thing about the Wii U being less powerful in G-Flops than Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, I don't think was correct. The speculation on NeoGAF from a bunch of forum posters said that the Wii U has 160 stream processors, not 320. So they cut it in half and said basically this is what you got, about 176 gigaflops. So that is less powerful than the Xbox 360 because Xbox 360 has 240 gigaflops of performance. And there's information to back up the 320 stream processors and 350 gigaflops for the Wii U. IGN ran a report back in 2011 where they gathered some information from developers who said that the Wii U was approximately 50% more powerful than PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. So 240 gigaflops to 350 gigaflops, that's approximately 50% more for the Wii U. So of course you can believe whatever you want if you want to believe the guys on NeoGAF who say it has 176 gigaflops of performance or you can believe Digital Foundry and developers who said that's actually more powerful and raw performance than the Xbox 360, which would equal about 350 gigaflops. And when you look at games like Xenoblade Chronicles X, it's obvious that the Wii U is more powerful than Xbox 360. Not just because they did some tricks with the hardware, no. The system is rendering a full open world with high details and a very good frame rate. Granted, it took a long time to make on the Wii U, but that still takes some horsepower, and no, I never saw an Xbox 360 game that looked as good as Xenoblade Chronicles X. Okay, so what does that mean for the Switch? Well, the downclocked version of the Switch when it's undocked is going to be running at 300 megahertz, downclocked almost 70% from the max clock rate that the Tegra X1 chip can produce at 1 gigahertz, down to 300 megahertz. That's going to be about 150 gigaflops of power there when you're on the go. And docked, the system is still downclocked to about 760 megahertz or so, and that equals out to be about 400 gigaflops or more, a little bit more than 400 gigaflops. So a little bit more powerful than the Wii U while docked. 
But again, we're just talking about raw performance here. So thanks to Tegra X1 is a much more modern chip than the Wii U had. And it's going to be using Unreal Engine 4 and all the latest APIs. And of course, all the latest modifications to these APIs. Obviously, it's still going to be a better performer than the Wii U is. So you could theoretically give it some more percentage points in performance based on that only. So theoretically, while the Switch could be a little bit over 400 gigaflops of performance while it's docked, that's definitely better than the Wii U. It's not that much, but the actual performance of it could be greater than that beyond just the raw numbers due to the things we just talked about. And using those custom features, possibly from the past scale, borrowing from it, could really increase the performance a lot more than just what it says on paper. So who knows, you could be getting a 500 plus gigaflops performance out of something that says a lot less. So that's why we need to wait and see the games for ourselves. This is only talking about the technical aspects of it. The games themselves I'm sure will be fun, but people have noticed, including myself, that the new Mario game that was shown and that quick shot of Splatoon that we saw, it did have improved graphical features over the Wii U, basically. Like Mario had added physics, he had different shaders on him, it looked a lot more detailed, and Splatoon had completely different tree meshes as well. So the trees definitely looked a lot more detailed and who knows about what other enhancements they have too. We only saw like a second of footage. So let's wait and see the games, uh, but I do think due to the modern architecture that the Switch could produce graphics that look theoretically 50% or two times even the performance of the Wii U. But it is definitely something I wanted to bring out and also that the Wii U was definitely not the slouch that people thought it was. It definitely was more powerful than Xbox 360. And despite what people thought on forums, that was never confirmed. And what Digital Foundry brought out about it having 320 screen processors is probably the most credible source we could get on the specs thus far. So take that for what it is, guys. All right, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. Let me know what you thought. Comment and subscribe. And I'll talk to you very soon in the next video. Take care.